This is an excerpt from the October 6, 1941 issue of Life magazine, which carried a multi-page feature article highlighting the largest mass training maneuvers undertaken by the U.S. Army. The mock battles of what became known as the Louisiana Maneuvers had one purpose, to prepare America's soldiers for the war that had already begun in Europe and was threatening to spread around the world. The Louisiana Maneuvers were a prelude to World War II. Likewise, the rudimentary barracks and facilities that sprang up as a result of the massive exercises were a prelude to the importance of Central Louisiana to the U.S. Armed Forces. And so Camp Polk was born to train soldiers and save lives. At the end of World War II, the American public, grown weary of tragic carnage, began focusing on peace and prosperity and the speedy return of the servicemen and women from overseas. By 1946, Camp Polk was designated a medical training center and only a skeleton force remained. Finally, in December, military officials declared Fort Polk inactive and the now empty barracks stood quiet. In August of 1950, the 45th Infantry Division, Oklahoma National Guard, reported for duty at Camp Polk. Camp Polk shook off the dust accumulated from disuse and once again teamed with soldiers training for war. But after the Korean War ended in 1954, Camp Polk's future was once again uncertain, and that year the installation closed. In 1955, Camp Polk, now called Fort Polk, reopened in preparation for Operation Sagebrush, America's biggest peacetime exercise since the 1941 Louisiana maneuvers. Some 85,000 troops participated, significantly fewer than the 400,000 involved 14 years earlier. When the Sagebrush exercises ended, the 1st Armored Division began establishing new headquarters at Fort Polk and the installation again reverberated with the sounds of cannons, machine guns, and soldiers marching in cadence. But in June of 1959, Fort Polk shut down completely. Many local businesses closed and citizens left seeking better opportunities. With the growing Berlin crisis in 1961, the 49th Armored Division began rolling into Fort Polk. And in June of 1962, the installation became an infantry training center. Its new mission? To provide basic training for individual soldiers, many of them draftees. Fort Polk offered them their introduction to the military and most would never forget the experience. By 1969, Fort Polk had dispatched more soldiers to Vietnam than any other military post in the nation. Between 1975 and 1990, the Army invested about $700 million in new post facilities. With an all-volunteer Army, soldiers began settling in the area with their families and relationships between Fort Polk and the local communities, always cordial, flourished. In 1993, the Joint Readiness Training Center moved from Fort Chaffee, Arkansas to Fort Polk, thus beginning the installation's reputation as the Army's premier combat training center. During the 1990s, American soldiers trained at JRTC and Fort Polk-based soldiers deployed to Haiti, Southwest Asia, Suriname, Panama, Bosnia, and more. As Fort Polk grew, so did the surrounding communities, as well as the support received by those communities. Then came September 11, 2001 a defining moment in American history. Since 9-11, more than 2.7 million American soldiers have deployed overseas. 50% of those soldiers trained here at the Joint Readiness Training Center and Fort Polk. But as it's been since 1941, the mission remains the same. Training our soldiers, security force assistance brigades, National Guard and Reserve units, and joint forces from allied nations for whatever tasks lie ahead. The Joint Readiness Training Center carries a tangible legacy of the men and women in uniform who have served Fort Polk and our country throughout the years. We continue to train brigade combat teams and international partners to fight and win conflicts that arise, curate and improve international relationships, and ensure the best quality of life of any installation in the Army.